What is 800,000 times 360? Mm. 280 million. Hi guys, so first things first, are we getting a part two? Because I don't know what's happening. Like, who do we need to call? Do we need to call the FBI, the CIA, the DSS? Do we need to call Buhari? Like, someone should tell me something that will make this happen. I would really, really love to see a part two of this movie. You know, like Mary Men, if you've watched the part one, I'm not sure you would ever want to see the part two. But apparently, we got new cast, so please go watch and support Nigeria. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Come on. Go there. Go there. Oh, it's dirty. The girls got a party. Then second thing for this movie, that's the sugar rush, is the camera angles. Now, whoever was behind the photography, the cinematography, whatever, whatever, the technicalities of this made sense. They actually went to school. You know, they actually watched a lot of YouTube tutorials. I'm just joking anyway. But it was like awesome. It's not something you expect in a Nigerian movie in terms of like camera angles and just a whole beautiful photography, right? Although there was a lot of blurring, but it's normal when you want to watch a Nigerian film. But anyway, the angles in itself was actually good. And I feel like we need to see more of that in terms of beautiful photographies in Nigerian films, period. Yeah. Anyway, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alan Kenneth. If you are new here, please subscribe to the vlog and also like and share the content and leave your opinions in the comment section if you want me to talk about something right anyway let's get into it so today's video is all about the review for sugar rush right and the experience so far i would love to start with the experience that i've explained the movie in the long run so i watched this film here in abuja at the silver bed cinemas in Busei, right and it's the one year yaradua's memorial i got into the cinema and i've been here before i normally pay like two five and it comes with popcorn and a drink right but this time around they said it was 3000 naira. i do not know why i watched this film yesterday it's friday and it's a weekday or is it a weekend i'm not sure anymore but they said it was 3000 naira for regular and 35 for vip and i was like okay it's just 500 naira difference right let's go and see what this vip is all about because if you have been to imax and lecky i mean 5000 naira is what um what paying for an imax because it's I mean, the chairs are good though. Anyway, at the cough screen. I was expecting something like that, but I was in for a shock. What we got at the end of the day is, you know when you go to some churches and they have overflows, like a second story up, and you just stay there. When they were describing the VIP for me, they said it's not crowded, um, there's a lot of space, uh, fewer chairs. And I was like, okay, does it come with anything else? Do you, does it come with like an extra popcorn or something? You know, like, what is the 500 naira for? Apparently, 500 naira is just for stairs and glass that you see for people on the floor. You get that kind of experience. It wasn't much. And I think that Silver Ben needs to do something about it because I totally could not hear. You get like the only part where you hear in that VIP section is when the background music is playing. Apparently the background music were up there and there were many speakers for like normal conversations. The movie went down. I don't know how that happened. But yeah, totally not good. Would not recommend it to anybody. Let's get into the movie itself. Sugar Rush was released December 25th of um, 2019. So that was last year. And I'm just getting around to watching this movie. My experience in total was good, but the movie was directed by Kairi Kasum. I'm sure that's the guy that is responsible for this camera angles. Then there's also, the story was written by Bumi. I don't know the son name or I know, but I can't pronounce it. And um, Jadi Sola Usiberu, right? Those are the people, those are like the organic tops. Then the cast involved Toki Makinwa, Bisola from Big Brother, Adesua, Banky W, Tobi Bakari, Bimbo, and funny enough, Laura Ikeji. Laura has finally blue because she acted as herself, you know? We have made it in life. And again, I was expecting to see Linda Ikeji with the way they kept on mentioning her name in the movie. It was almost like free PR. 
and billionaires actually pay for this. So it's quite interesting. And something I also want to point out is for those of you out there who have watched Banana Island Ghost, if you watch this film, it will feel like a family gathering, you know, when we finally come to open our secrets and tell everybody what's up. Because the adverts were also too much in this film, like you could just see it. But I like how they were trying to just do it, make the adverts look like one second, one second, one second, and just try and like chip it in there small, small. But we saw you guys though. This film is about the Sugar Sisters. You're wondering why the film was named Sugar Rush. Basically, there's this group of people in Nigeria that have the son named Sugar. Funny enough. Three sisters, we have Shola, we have Suzy, and we have Bola. Shola was played by um Ade no. Shola was played by who again? Was played by Bisola, right? Bola was played by Bimbo and Suzy was played by Adesua. These girls got them, got themselves into money. Um Adesua and Bisola discovered money um, at a party they were invited to and there were dead people there, but they found a way to discover eight hundred thousand dollars, took it away and Lao Lao spend it. But definitely ESC got involved somehow. Then the illegal part of ESC also got involved. Then someone else somehow who was a daughter, um, we clearly didn't see a dialogue transpiring or like a case build up to make this person appear like the person's daughter. It was just random. Um, yeah, but you get it when you watch the film. That happened, that person also became involved. Then Banky W, who was kind of like the mastermind, like an Escobar kind of persona in the film, also was also involved and, and Jazz was also involved in the film. Sorry if I'm not explaining this thing well because this is actually meant to be issue, so I don't know why I am working at it. That is the storyline if you can get it there because if you're confused then I think you are where I am, you get? So it's not boy meets girl and they fall in love, have children, happily ever after. It's a full-blown Nigerian movie. I think that's what we should be selling to the American market or to the world at large. Pure confusion, you know? But in, in all essence, the first half of the movie was good. But like from the opening sequence when um, Gina, which was played by Tolkien Makinwa, um, you could see three girls, that the Sugar Sisters, hand tied up in the air to a bar, to like a clothing reel, right? And she was interrogating them like, where is my dad's money? What do you guys do with it? Blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I don't want to hear your excuse no more. I want you to steal money for me to repay the money you took from dad, right? So that was the opening sequence. Then we now got into the movie where um do we not explain the characters in a way like one was obviously yahoo yahoo person the other one was like a runs girl then the third one was just by the side like an instagram influencer sort of persona and the movie got started funny enough if you follow talking back and while on instagram you would have known and seen some videos when they were making this film because she posted a lot of um, short clips and cast clips or whatever on Instagram when the theme when the theme was being made So like the ending part of the film where they blew the can whatever you could see that they were somewhere in Epe and Lagos shooting it on Instagram because of talking about I was posting a lot of like funny clips during that um, When they were shooting the film then there are a lot of things to talk about when it comes to reviewing this film and it will almost make the review inconsistent. But I am blaming my bad review of this movie on how... On how diverse the film was in terms of character and storytelling. That sounds a little bit political. Anyway, that was polite. Um, but one good thing here to mention is that the film was funny. There were a lot of funny characterizations that happened within the storyline, like a lot of funny scenes, uh, mosquito could kill you here, those kind of things, which will make the film more memorable than just saying it was an epic movie. And yeah, and I wish like they did a lot more with the music for the film. You know when you watch um, King of Boys, right? The soundtrack was good 
for that movie. The Roost or something like that. I feel like the music would have done a lot more to like hype um, the emotions of this film. But in a way, yeah, Jim Rush was just there. Deep down, I kind of feel like this movie was a project for Sibiru. Because I vaguely remember when she was looking for volunteers and trying to like give up and coming um, movie makers like an experience in making a film. There's a lot of forgivings for this film if you know like the history behind how it was made and how it was all put together, right? I remember Nigerian, the Nigerian movie industry is still coming up, right? In terms of like funding and yeah so we hope to see more and i really want to see part two of this movie so please someone make it happen i beg of you right see you in the next one remember to subscribe and hit the like button bye guys